Hills by Bishop Marvin Sapp on Get Up Mornings. A preacher called by God who is anointed to sing. He's an award-winning singer, songwriter, and author. Ten-time Grammy nominee. 22 stellar awards. Two Dove Awards. Two Soul Trains. Two BET Awards. We won't even talk about the sales and how long his songs stay number one on the charts. Uh, He's the senior pastor and bishop of the Lighthouse Full Life Center Church in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, Just a whole, listen, he has a school, he has a salon called Samson and Delilah's. It's just, it's, welcome, Bishop. (laughs) I do too much, girl. No, no, you're a great example for what we should be doing. We should be moving outside of the church doors doing more. People Absolutely. ask me all the time, and I, I use examples like you and Bishop Jakes. Like, uh, why do I have to only do one thing? Why does it surprise you when people in the kingdom uh, expand things. and have uh, uh, corporations and companies and well, do, it's, like it's it shouldn't be bibl- surprising? It's a biblical principle, and I think you know again because people are ignorant of Scripture. Yes, that's what happens. You know, there is a, a parable that God, uh, that Jesus taught about a man who had a certain amount of talents, a certain mm-hmm. amount of talents was yes. given to another, and a certain amount of talents was given yes. to one. Yes. Uh, six, three, and one. And he yes. gave these talents, and, and the whole purpose of these talents was to take them, multiply them, and bring yes. them back to the master. Mm-hmm. The one that had six gave back 12. The one that had three gave six. The one that had one buried it. But what right. happened was, which was so amazing, is that when he came back and said, listen, I didn't lose the one, he took the one and gave it to the one who had the most. Yes. Because God wants us to use our giftings to maximize. Mm. Yes. And what we tend to do is, is we think that, you know, we only can do one thing. I yes. write books. Mm-hmm. Uh, I own property. You know, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. Yes. And what I did was I like, used my platform as yeah. a recording artist Absolutely. in order to maximize the moment. And, and I think if we do that, the rest of our days will be the best of our days. I think that is an awesome, awesome example uh, for the kingdom of God. Um, where did this drive come from? Have you always been this way? Um, or did it come like after sex came and you were like, okay, now what do nah, I do with all the success? I've, I've always been this way. Absolutely. I mean, I've always had like vision. I've, I've For years, I've like I've always sat down and like forecasted what I wanted to do and where I wanted mm-hmm. to be. And I, I'm just a strong believer that you're supposed to write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that those that read it can run with it. Yes. You can't run with that which you have not written. Yes. You wow. can't read what you have not wrote out. So you got to read your own vision and you got to keep that before you. I mean, even before people start doing these vision boards, Mm -hmm. I was doing it years ago. Yeah. And just making sure that I plotted out my five year, my 10 year, my 20 year plan. What would you say to the person who starts a business and they feel like I got to do this myself because I know what I'm doing and you can't trust people. I always tell people Jesus was fully human, but fully divine. And he still had 12 guys that rolled with him and they didn't even talk about the women that were there. So Jesus had a full staff. How do you help? people understand the necessity of a good team. Well, Bishop Bishop Jakes taught me a long time ago. One of the greatest conversations I ever had with him is, you know, whenever I got with him, I would always, I would do concerts, I would preach at conferences, but mm-hmm. I never had that doc conversation. You know, like, doc, hey, what's doc. going on, doc? Yeah, yeah, doc, yeah. I got in the back and always asked him, like, major questions. Like, mm-hmm. what are you reading? Mm-hmm. I ain't talking about the Bible. I'm talking about what are you reading outside of the Bible? Mm-hmm. Um, yes. You know, different things. And one of the main things he taught me back in that day is he said, Marvin, friend up. I will never forget that. He said, you got a friend up, which means that you have to hang around people that have accomplished what you're trying Trying to to accomplish. accomplish. And that's one of the things that we don't do. We always try to hang with people that's at our level. Mm -hmm. You can't learn from people that's at your level. You got to learn from people who's already done what you've done. So that's always been my goal. My goal has always been friend up, hang with individuals that are doing things that I have not done, which stretches us. Yes, And that's what we need in this season. We need to be stretched. Friend up is so simple. Ain't that crazy? I heard heard, somebody explain. Explained it as expand my circle. Expand my circle, you know. And 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 when he said, they said, friend up. I said, what would you? He said, Marvin, you have to friend up in this season. So yeah. I, the reason why I opened up a full service salon is because when my daughter was thirteen, I did her hair, and she made me promise never to do it again. <laughs> yeah. So so I made a commitment that I would never do her hair again. But then I started taking her to a salon. And I took both of them to the salon, and mm-hmm. I was like, "This hair stuff is expensive." Oh, absolutely! Yes. That's and they was nice. They was eleven. That's why I have a hairline hair myself. You know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to get one myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> a called Delilah's. That's the truth. And and so you know, I looked around and I started saying, "I can't do hair, but I can count booth rent." You know what I'm saying? Yes. So I bought a full service. I, I built a full service salon, Manny Manny Petty Barber Beauty, and it's called wow. Samson Delilah's. It, it has. 
uh, the capabilities of having uh, 16 to 18 different individuals in it. It's a 12,000 square foot facility upstairs. Come on. It is three two bedroom, one bathroom apartments in the main floor. Is full service and law, along with daycare and school. We just moved our school. We're partnering with the public school system, and they're about to rename the school after my wife, uh, which I'm really excited about that. We just sold our campus, and uh, we're doing some great, great things in our community. Started my second location as a church, but that's not why I'm here. Girl, this record is fire. Well, listen, okay, we didn't spend up all this time, so now I need you to stick around. <laughs> yeah. Because in the next Obama. break, we're going to talk about your music. Um, I love you. I love the example Thank that you yes. leave. Thank you for always being available to give wisdom. Um, y'all don't go nowhere. We have to talk about this new album, Close. I'm on it. R. Kelly is on it. Okay, Saints, you wrap your mind around that. We'll talk about it in and a minute. And come back as we're going to talk about it in a minute. It's Get Up Mornings, 15 minutes to the top of the hour. Get up.